Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd Continuing on in our series about the manners and characteristics of Ramadan and some of the things to avoid one of the things which we should always concern ourselves with as Muslims is being on the Surat al-Mustaqim being on the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realizing that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen and it's not ours to play with that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us with guidance taken us from dhulamat al nur guided us from darkness into light and so it's imperative for us as Muslims to realize that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to be one and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has also told us and ordered us to be one community and hold on to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Fi kitabihi al-Karim, wa atasmu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la tafarqu." And hold on, all of you, to the rope of Allah, and do not divide. And Allah the Almighty said, "Fa ma the bad al-haqi illa al-dalal." And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty said, And what is after the truth except misguidance? So ponder on that. What is after the truth except misguidance? Meaning, the truth is the ultimate aim. And the truth, al-haq al-haq. You know, there is nothing else except falsehood. So, we have to practice Islam in its pristine form based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu in anything, any other path which is which differs and deviates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path is battle, is falsehood. Iman Aqida uh, <clears throat> all of those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us with is all from khair and everything which is the opposite of that shirk kufr dalal all of those things are madhmoom and based on evil falsehood shirk polytheism kufr disbelief which is the opposite of iman and tawheed monotheism and so forth قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم وأن هذا صراط مستقيم فاعتبئوا ولا تعتبئوا سبل فتفرقم فتفرق بكم عن سبيله Allah the Almighty said and verily this is my straight path so then follow it and do not follow the other paths which are misguided and separate from uh, from the the straight path. When Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه قال خط لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطا ثم قال هذا سبيل الله ثم خط خطوط عن يمينه وعن شماله وقال هذه سبل على كل سبيل منها شيطان يدعو إليه ثم قرأ وأن هذا سرعت مستقيم فاعتبئوا in a hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu قال The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam drew a line in the dirt and then he said this is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he drew a line on the right and he drew a line on the left of it and he said this is the different paths and on every one of them is a shaitan that calls to it then he read the verse in the Quran where Allah says, and verily this is my straight path, then follow it. The Prophet ﷺ illustrated for us that division, partisanship, hizbiya, all of those things are madhmoom. They divide the ummah. For example, this one says he's Naqshbandi. This one says he's Diobandi. This one says he is... Uh, he is following Sheikh Nazim. This one is following Sheikh Hamza. This one is following Ahl Takfir wa Hijra. This one is following 
uh, another path. But in fact, we're ordered to be believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're ordered to follow the straight path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path. And another benefit we derive from this hadith is that we see that this hadith shows us that there are other paths and that there are shayateen that call to them. When you look at all the ra'us of the jama'at and all the ra'us of the sects, whether it be the Jahmiya, whether it be the Qadariya, whether it be the Shia Rafidiya, whether it be the Khawarij, whether it be all the groups throughout history, the Ashaira, the Mu'tazila, all of these groups, they all have shayateen that call to, the, to that path. Because those shayateen, most of the time, they have knowledge. It isn't that they, they, everything they do from the beginning to the end is on ba- batil and falsehood. That's what we have to realize. Ahl al-Dalal and, ahl- and the people of falsehood, the way they mislead people because they have something of the truth. It isn't that everything they do, every, every group, if you want to talk about groups of this day and age, which are not sects, but in fact they're groups, like Akhwana Muslimin, Jamaat Tabliq, and Jamaat Takfir wa Hijra. Those are not sects. Those are called groups, which they differ, and maybe at some other point we'll talk about the details regarding that. But they differ from the sects. The point is, with every one of those jama'at, and every one of those groups that call to it, there is a da'i to the bid'ah. There's a person who calls and propagates innovation, which is an innovation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion, and they are da'is to the hellfire. Because they're calling away from Allah's straight path. And, on top of that, they... <coughs> are dividing the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how do they invite people? They invite people by calling with something which is truthful. For example, Jamaat Tabliq. They invite the people to the prayer. The prayer is a pillar of Islam. It's the second pillar of Islam. They invite the people to having sincerity. This is one of their pillars. They invite the people to Tawheed al rububiyyah That's, that's the haq. But... Where they fall short is Tawheed al uluhiyah They don't invite people necessarily to worship Allah alone. That's why, as Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned, you'll find amongst them people who have been making khuruj for over 20 years of his life, but he still is committing shirk. So, this shows us that every group and every sect, they have something from the truth with them along with their falsehood, because that is how the shaitan invites. There's no way the shaitan, if if someone were to offer you a dirty glass of water, there's no way you would accept it. You see mold, and you see, uh, and, you, you, and a foul smell is coming from it. You would never drink from that. But in fact, if they bring you a clear glass of water, but yet there's a light odor, you, you might not be able to tell the odor. Or there's something mixed in there of the same color as the fluid of that water. And then you drink it, then you taste the foulness. That's how they deceived you. And that's the similitude with Ahl Bid'ah. That they come to you in, in, in manners which are deceiving. They bring aspects of the religion, but not the total religion. You rarely hear them emphasizing Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His divine names and attributes in a manner that suits his majesty in the manner that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed for himself and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed in his uh, authentic sunnah alayhi salatu wa salam so this is how ahl bidah they come to us and that's why we have to be careful they come with something of the truth and they come with something of falsehood whereas ahl sunnah they come with the truth even if they as individuals may have taqsir they may have sins they may fall short they may even have deviated as individuals, they can deviate. Someone can be on the sunnah and they can deviate. May Allah protect us from that. But we don't judge the sunnah by that. Because someone from Ahl Sunnah has fallen short. Or they've fallen into an innovation. Or they fell into a bid'ah. Or they fell into a mistake. Or that they had bad manners in their da'wah. But they still were calling to the same methodology of the NBA. Alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, which is tawheed which is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Islamic monotheism, and it's the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعْثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَجْتَانِ بُوتَاقُوا That we've sent to every messenger, every nation and the messenger, to worship Allah and stay away from those things prohibited, uh, those things which are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Abdullah bin Amr, رضي الله تنعنه, قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, 
Bani Israel Tafarqat Ala Thintain wa Sura'in Milla Wa Tafarqa Ummati Ala Thalatha wa Sura'in Milla Kullahum Finnar Illa Milla Wahida Kalu Wa Man Hiya Ya Rasulullah Kala Ma Ana Alayhi Wa Ashabi So the pro- I'll end with this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said and the children of Israel they broke into 72 sects or 72 uh, 72 sects and my ummah would break into 73 sects all of them in the hellfire except one and then they said who are they Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said those who are upon what I'm upon and my companions so that shows us that if we want success in this life as well as the hereafter then we have to follow the tariq al-haq wa sabil Allah which is one that we have to follow the path of the truth and it's the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is the minhaj of the salaf al-salih which is what the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were upon and it is they are the leaders of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah they are the rules of the Salaf al-Salih Ridwan Allahi alayhim ajma'in and that's what we're ordered to follow that is the straight path of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to hold on to the rope of Allah alone all together and do not divide and that's one of the most important things that we can keep in front of us during Ramadan and outside of Ramadan is reeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path is one it is the path of, of Islamic monotheism and it is a pure path which doesn't require uh, to, to bring anything new to that path and that the path has been fortified and explained and made clear through the sunnah of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and if you hear someone who curses the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in then know that they are zindiq then know that they are someone of great evil and someone who is innovated in the religion of Islam and has possibly just left the fold of Islam wa'iyadhim illah that is not even a Muslim how is it that we can look to a path other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path and feel that we will have success and how is it that a person could curse the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in and curse the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in as if to say Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't know who to choose his companions and as if to say that Allah didn't put the best people around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to help preserve this deen. And it is if to say that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala didn't preserve this deen. Because the Quran was compiled by the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. And the Sunnah was preserved by the companions and the Tabi'een with Tabi'a Tabi'een radiallahu ta'ala majma'in and the Salaf al So that is the Minhaj in the Sabil Allah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be on the Sabi'il Allah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.